Hello, I would like to share my little adventure in optimization of a React application. I was having a little bit problems with this uh, application here because when I fill up the uh, form field, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't reacting fast enough. Now you don't see uh, very much because probably my browser just uh, woke up a little bit, but it was uh, noticeably lagging, and so I started to look into uh, the problem and to try and figure out what was going on. So my first attempt was to um, collect a trace with Chrome, collect JavaScript CPU profile. And so, you know, I went to, uh, to the place, start, hit three keys, stop, and then look at the trace. And you can see from the trace that um, there are uh, three spikes uh, in correspondence of my three uh, keystrokes and you can see the first method is react event listener dispatch event so this has to necessarily uh, have to be you know the event handler with all the uh, stuff that's happening uh, below so um, if you zoom in you will see that um, it's it's doing two chunks of uh, computation one uh, ends with an ease email function which I recognize from my code, and it's the validation function that computes whether uh, an email field is uh, correct, valid or not. And it takes 15 milliseconds, so that's already interesting uh, information because uh, 15 milliseconds is not too much, but it's a lot if you do it too many times. So uh, that already suggested me that I maybe want to memoize the function so that I only compute it when it's strictly necessary. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that I see a very, very deep um, call stack on the React side, so this it's it's hard to debug this unless you know the library. Um, but this basically tells me that React is doing a lot of things. So it's not easy to figure out what exactly it's doing from this trace. But fortunately, there's a, a better tool for doing that. And so um, let me show you. So I will reload the application again. Go there. And then, uh, since I exposed for convenience um, inside the, through the document uh, uh, global uh, the React, I can actually go to Add-ons and then Perf. This is a very nice uh, tool that's available only in development mode, so you need the Add-ons. Uh, but I can do Start, and it's basically the same concept as before. I go there and hit my three keystrokes, and then I stop. And now I can print the wasted, which gives me this very nice table where I see order by component with the owner uh, of the component, so you know, parent child relationship. Uh, I see all of the components that are wasting time. What does it mean? Basically, this one, country field, is computing for 136 milliseconds, which is a lot, um, without actually changing anything in the DOM. And in fact, if you print DOM, you will see what the DOM operations are. And of course, you know, in the end, it all boils down to adding my three keystrokes and printing this error message. So it shouldn't take 130 milliseconds to do that. So um, besides, if you look at the, uh, you know, let's look again. This is called country field, it's a component. But I'm not editing the country field, I'm editing the email field. So it doesn't make much sense that while I'm editing the email field, my country field, which is actually you know this huge uh, select multi you know select uh, uh, tag, you know which of course takes a lot of time to render, doesn't make much sense to render it when I'm editing the, the email field, right? So if we go to the code, we start to see why this happens because basically I'm accessing the building info, which is this compound object containing all the uh, form fields um, through the props. Uh, and I have the whole billing info um, object coming in as a prop, uh, but I only access the country, um, you know, w one specific element of that um, of that uh, whole object. And not, I'm not interested in the other ones. But React doesn't know uh, because you know whenever it sees the property changing in general, then it will render the component. And the properties in general will change because I'm changing the. Uh, another field in the building info so you know because this is immutable then the whole object will be uh, a new one and so this is this is the problem so the solution is uh, to actually tell uh, react that I'm that it should it should uh, re-render the component only under specific conditions 
using the should component update method. So basically here it's a little long because you have to be careful and, and check all of the um, uh, attributes, uh, all of the properties that you are interested in, but in the end it all boils down to saying that to comparing the, the, the country specific element of the building info. Then React now knows that uh, I'm only interested in, in that field and not the rest. So it, you're telling the framework that it shouldn't recompute, uh, re render the, co the component if something else changes. Only if these com properties, uh, these uh, conditions have, are, are met. Now, if I do again the uh, performance profiling, um, now that I've changed the code, so I start, hit three keys, and I stop and I print the wasted. Now I don't see that field in the list anymore. 130 seconds, milliseconds saved. Now I have another field in the list that I may or may not decide to tackle whether you know I have a performance issue again or not. I may be content and happy with this. Otherwise, you know, this is the next uh, this is the, the next field that it makes the most sense to work on because I'm wasting 20 milliseconds on these. I may want to shave that off as well. But that's uh, that's a way uh, that's a very convenient way to do it.